Right. Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not shocked. Um, I mean, he controls a huge percentage of the Republican Party. I mean, the Repu I mean, Republicans in America support Donald Trump. If they were the only voters, he would be president um, again, easily. Um, they're afraid of him. He also wields power in a way that no recent president has. I mean, I mean, Mitt Romney pushed back. He went on Twitter, attacked him, attacked him publicly. This is a this is a different animal. I, to me, there's a lot. Put, put aside the differences, of which there are some, um, in the level of the alleged offense between this and Watergate, the climate is remarkably different. I mean, think of Watergate. Howard Baker, a moderate United States senator who made it clear to the world that in his mind, his legacy was more important than Richard, Nix Richard Nixon's immediate survival. There were, there were more Republican senators like that, first off. There was no Fox News. Yes. I always, I, I, I have this, um, I'm, not, I'm not a um, literary writer or a play, playwright, but I always thought if there is one in the room, my wife's a writer, but if there is one in the room, someone in the room who, um, who can imagine, picture Watergate with Fox News. Picture Watergate, what, imagine what that would have been like. John Dean's remarkable testimony, a nation riveted by the story, and then Sean Hannity comes on at night and says, look at that little twerp. Wasn't he awful? He's been against us from the very beginning. He's betraying us. It would have been a very different story. There were three television networks. There were Republicans, and as, as I said, who were moderate. And that, this climate is very different. But here's what we don't know. I don't know, I think we didn't know what Trump and what Donald, what the president and Rudy Giuliani had done in the Ukraine to this extent a few months ago. I don't think, I don't know what we're gonna know in two months. I don't know, I don't know what the level of, of what the, where the level of allegations will go. I don't, I don't know the answer to that, and that's a big unknown. Mm. And I don't know whether it arrives, the Iowa caucuses are in February. Mm. I don't know whether it arrives before the Iowa caucuses. Half the candidates are United States senators who would have to fly back to vote. The period between now and the middle of next year will be one of the most, stay tuned, will be one of the most dramatic periods in American politics. An impeachment hearing, an election, half the candidates getting to vote, it's gonna be stunning. Mm. Um, very interesting and, again, dispiriting, I think, has been, I was talking to my wife who was watching a bit, um, and um, it, it's extraordinary that the kind of, there was a kind of scuttlebutt around, I don't know where, really, on the web that, and I, th I think it was true, some of you here may have noticed this, that there was a British complaint that, oh dear, these hearings are so dull. They quote, <laughs> I picked up on Twitter, lack pizzazz, and that is, of course, <laughs> You know, the pizzazz shortage is, you're all right, I, I laugh too, <laughs> but actually there is a serious issue, and the issue in my understanding is this, is that Donald Trump did actually, whether it was Donald Trump or Steve Bannon, but I think it was really, it came naturally to Donald Trump as a TV reality show presenter, that he realized um, at the time the rallies were going on, and sober minds, including me, insofar as my mind is ever sober, said, well, these are ephemeral things. My son-in-law worked on the Hillary Clinton campaign, and he certainly said, rallish is basically what counts is our algorithmic calculations about who, who we've got and who we haven't. And big decisions about where you put your advertising budget actually depended on what those algorithms told you. And they told you, Wisconsin's gonna be fine, Michigan's gonna be fine. It didn't, what Donald Trump discovered was the glee of hatred was this extraordinary way in which you could sort of transcribe, transpose really, the sort of the visceral aggression, the adrenaline rush of taking on enemies, the hit of brutal rudeness, which is his bread and butter on The Apprentice, and actually turn it into political capital. So the issue, you, you run an institution where the thinks again when you're talking so eloquently about the difference with 1974 and Fox News not being there. You know, fixtures like David Brinkley 
and your paper, the Washington Post, and so on, they were sort of like political church. They were sort of accepted as, you know, reliably transparent and so on. Yeah. And now the hit, which means where advertisers are going to put their money, is on the rush of celebrity wildness almost. Yeah. It's almost, almost like that. Yeah. So uh, the, the, the worrying thing is actually the kind of the intoxication of hatred is such an extraordinary issue in American politics. How does something as serious and judicious um, as the New York Times deal with that? I'm not, I'm not asking you to turn yourself into a kind of cabaret of liberal joy or something. On, on the other hand, it's not a bad idea. Um, <laughs> but do, do you think, you know, how do you fight back against, against that? Because that's what Hannity and, and Ann Coulter and Laura Ingraham, that's what they do, it's what Rush Limbaugh does. Rush Limbaugh yeah. is a great entertainer, alas. Yeah. So. You, uh, you very eloquently <laughs> captured the issue. Um, and it's, it's really difficult. I mean, I can tell you what weapons I think we have. I, I can tell you my honest belief is that over time we win. Um, because, to be frank, over time we usually win. I don't mean the press, but I mean the, 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 the press, the fact-based independent press has won every time. I mean, Richard Nixon attacked the Washington Post relentlessly. Everybody forgets how long Watergate lasted. It lasted like two years. The Washington Post was all by itself banging away. Um, Richard Nixon threatened their television licenses. It did not, now it looks like, oh my God, it was the nirvana of journalism. At the time, in the moment, it looked like one newspaper sloppily, I'm not, it wasn't sloppy, I'm just saying what the perception was, mm. sloppily pushing against the tide. Mm. It took a long time for the New York Times and other news organizations to jump in to the fray. So my, my own view is that <coughs> I, think you, I think we win, if that's the right way to put it, by continuing to be independent, continuing to dig, continuing to report, going out in the country and talking to people who don't just live in New York or Los Angeles or San Francisco. Getting, talking to, what we, what we failed to do in 2016, by the way, is not doing enough of that. I think the, the anger, the, the sense of abandonment that you described that a lot of Americans felt that led, is one of the reasons Donald Trump won, one of the reasons that Americans wanted something dramatically different, I don't think we had a handle on, I don't think we quite understood the hangover from the, the financial crisis. I don't think we quite had our heads around the, you know, the, the effects of real income inequality in the sense that a lot of people felt that the rich got fixed after the economic crisis and they didn't. I don't think we had a handle on how much people were upset by the arrival of technology, the death of the industries they worked in. And I think that the, some of the elite press, to be frank, looked down on those people a little bit and, and, and didn't go out and say, trust me, I mean, we, we gave them the impression, even the American presidents, trust us, NAFTA is going to be good for you. I think if I, I believe, and this is my naive part, if we go out into the world, talk to those people, understand them, write about them, explain the world to them, and do it relentlessly for years, which is essentially what happened with Watergate. I think in that case, I'm gonna I'm gonna believe that truth wins out. I have to. Yeah. 